when we're writing constructors and subclasses, there's a few real specific rules that we have to follow. And uh, we also have to be conscious of a few things that we learned earlier about constructors and classes in general. So I've got a few different scenarios set up here. I've got a parent A class, which is going to be linked to a child A class in our super sub relationship. And in my first scenario in parent A, I haven't provided any constructor at all into the class. In my second scenario, parent B, there's exactly one constructor and it requires a string. And in my third scenario, parent C, I've actually got multiple constructors, including a no argument constructor and a string only constructor. What we're going to see is that in the classes that inherit from these three parents, there's going to be some different situations, some different rules and requirements that are needed of those classes and their constructors. In Java, you don't inherit a constructor, but you can invoke a parent constructor from a subclass. Sometimes you need to, sometimes you don't. So let's take a look at the differences. In parent A, there's no constructor at all. However, we learned earlier this year, back in unit five, that if you don't provide your class with a constructor, Java will provide you with one. And the constructor that Java will provide you with essentially is this one, where it's a no argument constructor, okay? Um, so notice that it matches the class name. There's no return type, it's public. And something that we didn't learn really about in unit five is that there's a line of code in there. That line of code invokes the constructor above this one. So the super class to parent A. Well, that's a little confusing because I don't see a super class listed. Well, just like I was saying that if we don't put this code into our class, Java provides it for us. If we don't specify our super class, Java picks it for us. And so when Java picks your super class, it picks the object class. And so I don't have to write that there explicitly. We've been omitting it all year. But what I should understand is that when I don't write it, implicitly Java does for me. So even if I don't say that I'm extending the object class, Java chooses to. Even if I don't provide a constructor, Java does. So <clears throat> if I, Java's gonna give me this constructor, then what that means is, is that even if I don't write it, okay, I can still create parent objects. So if I go to some other class's main method, I can create an object from this class and everybody's happy. Even though I didn't provide a constructor to the parent A class, you can invoke it. You can say, I wanna run the constructor from parent A, go make me a parent and I'm gonna hold it in this parent A variable that I've called P1 and everything happens, okay? And again, even though, even though if we go look in parent A and we don't see that constructor, it's really there. And that constructor really invoked the constructor above it, which came from the object class. Okay, why am I making such a big deal out of this? Well, now, if we're gonna inherit from parent A, some similar things could take place to our advantage. We could inherit from parent A and we could do not a single thing. If we wanted to, we could, we could just leave this entire class blank, okay? And we could actually run this code. There's no constructor in this class. There's not a single line of code. Yet in my main method, I was able to invoke the child A constructor create a child A object and hold it in a child A variable called C1, even though the class was empty. In addition to that, I was able to call the get name method and it said person. I was able to set the name. I was able to get the name again after I had changed it to Brian. And that's due to inheritance. I inherited all of the public behaviors and attributes of the person class, person A, I should say, parent A, I should say, <laughs> down to child A. Uh, now, in parent A, what did we have? We had a name, we had a set name, we had a get name. The name is private. So if you notice here, I had this line commented out. 
if we tried to do this, we would get an error message. Okay, remember you can't to get that private variable, even though you've inherited it, it's still private. But we can use these public methods that I'm using here. Okay, and I did that without doing anything. Could I do some stuff? Sure. Now, keep in mind, even though I didn't do anything, Java went into action. Java saw that I didn't have a constructor. Java wrote a constructor. When Java writes the constructor for you, it doesn't put anything in the parentheses. I wrote that code and hit run. It would still work. No problem. In fact, Java still did something for me. Java still invoked that super class constructor, even though I didn't ask it to. You don't have to write that line. We haven't written that line all year and you don't need to start now. But whether you write it or not, it's going to happen. The first thing every constructor does is it invokes the constructor above it until you get all the way to the object class constructor. At that point, it takes place and then all the constructors below it start to fall back in line. Okay. And so if you climbed up five classes, then you'd start climbing down five classes in order, in the, in, in the opposite order. So starting from the object to the one below it, to the one below it and so on. All right. If Java writes this line of code for you, it doesn't put any parameters in. Okay. That's going to be important in a minute here. It wasn't a big deal because I don't need to give anything to the parent a class because the parent a constructor wasn't asking for anything. If the parent a constructor had been asking me for a string or an integer, turns out I would have had to have given it to it, but it wasn't. So in fact, remember I could get rid of this constructor and everything still works because if I don't write it, Java will write it. So this doesn't now jump over it or anything. It would still go to the parent a constructor. We don't see it, but it's there. All right. Okay. So if the parent class doesn't have a constructor, the child class doesn't even need one. And if you did give it one, as long as you didn't try to like send something up that wasn't expected, okay, you'd be fine. Now, if I tried to send a number up to parent A, that would cause an error because there's no constructor in parent A capable of handling an integer, right? Where would that integer go? So there's nowhere for it to go. That's why all of a sudden I got an exception. Since I didn't have a constructor in my super class that was expecting an integer, I can't send one up there. Okay. Again, if you don't write this line of code, still works. Don't write this line of code, still works. Okay. All right. If you don't write this, you've broken the relationship. Now child A would try to go up to the object class. Now we're going to have some issues because if you remember in my main method, child A was attempting to use methods from the parent A class. If I break the relationship between them, I can't do that anymore. I've lost the inheritance. Okay. So child A needs to inherit from parent A to do the things that I was asking of it, but it's not required to send any information up. Okay. That was the first scenario. Let's look at the second one. In this scenario, my parent B constructor is demanding a string. There's no other constructor here. Now, at this point in the year, very often students think, well, all classes have a default constructor or a no argument constructor. That's not true. Okay. Java only provides you with a no argument constructor in the case that no other constructor has been provided. Since I have now provided my own constructor, no longer will Java write a constructor for me. So Java is not going to say all that other stuff. It is still going to do this. It's still going to extend the object class. If I don't tell it to, that didn't change. Okay. So even though I don't write that, it's still there. And it actually is still going to do this. Even, even if I delete it, it doesn't matter if I delete it or not. The first line of code in every constructor invokes the super class constructor until you've reached the object class. Okay. So I know we've never written that line all year and you don't have to start writing it now. Okay. Because remember it's worked all year. 
So it's not like it's not like we got to retroactively go back and rewrite every class we've written for the last four months. No, no, it, you don't need to put it there. If you don't put it there, Java puts it there for you. If I don't put this here, Java puts it for me. I don't need to put it there. I don't need to put that there either. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. But here's the bottom line. OK, before we get too worried about that, there's only one way to make a parent B. You got to give it a string. OK, there's no other way. There's no you go in the main method and you try to make a parent B object without giving it a string. You're going to get an error message right now. I'm giving it a string. That's what it wanted. Everybody's happy. If I take that string out of there, not going to work. Remember, this class doesn't have a no argument constructor. Java didn't provide it with one because I provided it with its own constructor. OK, what if I put here dad and I put 43? No oh, good. There's no constructor in that class that wants a string followed by an integer. You have to match the parameter requirements that it's asking for. So again, there's only one way to make a parent B. You got to give it a string. There's no other way. Okay? There's no other way. Now, why is that so important? Well, let's go to its inheriting class. Whatever class inherits from parent B is a parent B, right? Child B is a parent B. Child B inherits from parent B. Well, what that means is, is that this class has to have like as much stuff as parent B does. So it has to have a string. The parent B constructor is asking for a string. We've got to send it that string that it wants. We can't be a child B until we do that. So that's why I said right here at a minimum, at a minimum, this has to happen. You must open this constructor with the word super with a string parameter. If you do anything else, you can't fix it later. There's no workaround. OK, so like sometimes in Java, like we say, oh, I'm going to do it a different way. No, nope. no, there is no different way this time. This is it. You don't do that. All bets are off. The program crashes. OK, so I have to send a string to that constructor. You don't inherit constructors. So if you tried to like call the constructor by its name, you don't, you don't inherit constructors. You inherit methods and you inherit instance fields. If I did something like this, if I said like, uh, I don't know, let's, let's say, well, I don't want to use if, but like, let's just, for whatever reason, let's say I put something like this here, not going to work. It, it has to be the very first line of code. Now, does the child B class constructor have to ask for a string? No, no. Notice I'm, I'm, I'm running my code with a no argument child B constructor in my main method, I'm creating a child B out of nothing. Even though it's parent class wants a string, child B doesn't have to get a string. Child B simply has to pass a string from its constructor to the super. So again, this is the minimum. This is the minimum. Now, if you want more, you, you can do more. So for example, Let's say that we give an age, you know, I'll make it private just to be consistent. Let's say we give an age instance field to our class. Then a child B could ask for that age uh, as a parameter. OK, and then we could initialize age with that parameter. That's totally fine. Totally fine. OK, uh, let's say that we gave it, you know, some other thing like um, private boolean uh and i don't know in school okay and then we could come down here we could say all right well give me a boolean too and i'm going to use it to initialize this variable called in school it's either going to be you know true or false all right so yeah i can do that stuff now now i in my scenario i'd have to go to my main method and make some changes because i'm i was creating a child b so like right now, maybe I say like 12 and true because I was asking for those two pieces of information. So as long as I satisfy that over here, everybody's going to be happy. OK, again, you can do whatever you want in there as long as you do this first. All right. If you do this later, no good. It's got to be the first line of code within that subclass constructor. 
Now, if you want, again, again, remember how I started. I started with nothing here. But I mean, if you wanted to, sure, you, you could say, give me a string. OK, you, you could say, you know, tell me tell me this kid's name. And uh, and then you could pass that string from here up. That's totally fine. I was just showing you earlier. You don't have to do that. Okay, All you had to do was send the string up. All this other stuff that I'm doing now is is totally fine, you know. Like I, I could do this, and now we'll send that name up there, and uh, our kid would be named Eric as opposed to be named Dad or some name. I think earlier it was saying some name, which you know looked a little weird. Now it says Eric because we brought that name in through the constructor, and we sent it up. Everybody's cool. All right. All right. This is all because the parent B constructor demanded a string. So no matter what, that had to happen. If I took that constructor out, if I didn't, it wouldn't work. I have to write that line because if I don't put that constructor there, think about what Java is going to do. Java is going to do this. Java is going to write the constructor for me. And they're going to write that. Java is going to write the first line of code in the constructor. And they're going to write that. What Java is not going to do is put a string in there. Now, that line of code would jump up to the parent B constructor. Hey, I'm here. <laughs> the parent B constructor is going to say, all right, where's that string you promised me? Oh, I don't have it. I came here with nothing. All right. It's going to say, well, tough luck, buddy. Get out of here. Because if that, if that class constructor doesn't pass up the required information of it, it's going to be rejected. It's, it's right here. It's, it's just going to say, "Sorry, I can't do that." Like I don't, I don't know what you, you know, what you wanted from me. Okay. Um, all right. So if I put in a string here, it's, sorry. I put in a string, everybody's going to be happy. Okay. Now I did my job. If I had left it up to Java and said, you go write the constructor for me, Java's going to write this constructor. Java's not going to pass a string up and we're going to get this error message. Okay. So we have to send a string up there. Any string, just as long as we're sending a string. All right. Third scenario, third scenario, parent C has multiple constructors. Parent C has a default constructor. Parent C has a string only constructor. This gives me a lot of choices now from my subclass. Okay. My subclass actually has the choice to do nothing. And I, and I literally mean nothing like we could, we could just absolutely wipe this out. Now in my main method, I'll have to turn off a few lines of code because I was using some of those other constructors that I just deleted, but I could turn off these two lines of code here and oopsies, go back and I'll turn off these two and, and this would work. I, again, I could have a completely blank child C class and get away with it. The reason that I'm getting away with it is because right now Java's writing the constructor for me. Java's writing the word super, leaving it blank, which means we're going to go from child C to parent C constructor with no arguments. But when we arrive, there's an argument or a no argument constructor. And so it would invoke that constructor. It would set the name to Brian. And look what we got. We got a name of Brian. Yeah. So again, again, if, if you leave this blank, that's cool. Java comes along and says, hey, I'll do it for you. Here's your constructor. And here's what I'll do. I'll invoke your super class constructor with nothing. And as long as there's a super class constructor expecting nothing, everybody's happy. Okay. All right. Well, that was one option. Okay. Do nothing. Right. That's a good option. Right. To have do nothing. Or we could write our own constructor. Now, in writing our own constructor, we have a lot of choices. I wrote three different ones here. I wrote one that's parameterless. That's the one that Java would have written for me anyway. 
Now I have to be a little careful. If I, let's say I took this constructor out of here. Okay. That's going to actually be a problem now, because remember, once you put your own constructor in Java, no longer writes the default constructor for you. That's actually bad in my scenario, because remember in the main method, I was trying to make a no argument child C object. And all of a sudden that became illegal because this is weird. Like remember I did nothing and it worked. I did something else and it took it away. So Java doesn't give me that default constructor anymore. If I want it, I'd have to explicitly write it in, which I can do. Okay. If I explicitly write it in, then it's cool because now the main method came here which went here, even, even though I commented that line out, Java wrote it for me and it went to the parent C constructor and it invoked that no argument constructor. Okay. Here's some other choices. I could send an integer in child C can have additional properties. We're going to talk about this more in our next video, but child C can have additional properties like an age variable and we could initialize it in the constructor. Now look what I wrote here. Something happened prior. Hopefully you're catching on before age was set to a, this actually happened. We invoked the super class constructor. Which constructor did we invoke? We invoked the one that didn't expect anything because if we leave it up to Java, that's what's going to happen. If we leave it up to Java, they're going to invoke that constructor. So if we go back here now and we turn this stuff on, we'll see for ourselves that when we invoke this integer constructor and we run it, it's going to end up with the same name as the parameter list constructor, which was Brian. Okay. That's this one showing up. Both of these right here displayed Brian, even though they accepted different arguments, they actually both invoked the same parent constructor. And that's true whether or not you write that line of code again, you don't have to write that line of code. If you wrote that on a test, maybe I'd think, oh, that kid's pretty cool, but it wouldn't change a single thing. Okay. Now I've got another constructor here where the user gives me a string and an integer. And then I did two things. I kept the integer local, but I sent the string up. So the string went up to the parent C class. Okay. And it got used right here to initialize the name. Now, even though that name's private, we still inherit it. It still is part of this child C that's being created. We just can't access it directly. We could access it with these methods. I could call set name. I could call get name. So right now I, I put in daughter, but like if I wanted to, you know, I could come here and I could say C five dot set name and I could put in, you know, uh, I don't know, Beth. And you wouldn't see daughter now. Now you'd see Beth. Okay. So that name variable, we do inherit it. This child has it. It's part of it. It's just, you don't have direct access to it. Now, if the, if the author of that parent class puts a public accessor or modifier method in like they did, we can use it. Okay. So it still belongs to us. All right. Hope you learned a little bit here on constructors. Uh, and then, like I said, we're going to get more into some other things in the next video.